Here's a little novelty ball, and if you uh, strike it, there's a electronic gadget inside which uh, blinks uh, two LEDs, one red, one green. Uh, this thing cost me uh, all of two dollars, so I should imagine that the industrial engineering is very clever. Uh, let's take this uh, outer coating off and uh, extract the electronics. So inside the rubber ball is a uh, little plastic uh, sphere, and inside that is the electronics. Uh, you can just see I activated them. There's a, a little spring here, and when it's uh, jostled just enough, it touches the pad below, and of course uh, turns on a red LED and a blue LED. Uh, three button cells uh, in series producing around four volts. So this is the view of the circuit board of the assembly. Uh, you got a little spring there, of course, going onto the pad in the lower left, uh, which when jostled makes contact. Uh, two contacts coming up from the battery uh, coin cells to provide power to the assembly. Uh, a traditional LED soldered in a package on the uh, lower right. And then, most interestingly enough, uh, it's a so-called chip on board. There's two chunks of silicon and they're glued to the circuit board and then uh, bonded onto it. And then a blob of epoxy is placed to that. Curiously, this time the epoxy isn't black. This is tradition, uh, but it's clear. It has to be clear, of course, so the uh, light comes out of that one LED. Uh, and then, of course, you can see there's actually a little air bubble is formed in the assembly. So, again, if you look at the circuit board, it's obviously not of the highest quality, but again, it is a disposable bit of electronics. Let's uh, take the circuit board away from the... Uh, integrated circuit, take off that epoxy, and uh, take a look at the controller and see how they achieved uh, this blinking function. So this is the uh, silicon die inside of that blinky ball. Um, it's uh, quite small, it's uh, one millimeter on the side. Uh, in fact, it's so small, this is my only photograph of it, because after I took this photograph, I managed to lose it somewhere in my workshop, a tiny little uh, device. Uh, what we're looking at is uh, five bond pads, and uh, to sort down what those are, we can identify that there's uh, two FET structures as highlighted, uh, the FETs, of course, uh, driving some sort of high current, which, of course, would be the LED. So that implies those two paths highlighted there uh, must be the LED driver outputs, one for each color. Uh, there's two pads on the diagonal. They both connect to, you can see, metal right across from them. So a good sign those are the power and ground pads. And that would leave the pad on the lower right must be the uh, input, which actually controls the oscillation. Okay, with the polymerase out of the way, uh, let's actually analyze the chip's functionality. Of course, you might be wondering why I'm analyzing such a goofy thing. Um, I thought it might be an interesting look at uh, what happens when a designer is given basically no money. With a sell price so low, uh, I don't have any doubt that there's probably only about 3 to 5 cents allowed to the uh, silicon die here, which of course meant the designer has had to be very clever in their use of um, silicon. Uh, the large metal structure that I've highlighted there I would strongly suspect is a capacitor. You're going to need some sort of timing function on this die. you got to create an oscillator uh, for that blinking pattern and I suspect that's the building block there. Uh, then of course below uh, the two pads you can see a sequence of other analog type functions. Uh, there might have to be a small voltage regulator although that might just run straight off the batteries. Um, there of course still needs to be more things like a reset circuit to get the uh, thing to start up properly. And that would leave a whole bunch of logic gates. Now, before we go into what those might be, let's go back and actually look at what the ball does. So with the module connected to an oscilloscope, let's uh, see the output of the signal from one of these LEDs. So here's the signal. It's three pulses on one LED, then three on the other. Uh, even though I'm only measuring one LED, what happens is because the, uh, there's no current limiting, you can actually see the uh, voltage uh, changes when the other LED lights. So... And we're about 50 milliseconds per division here, so it's just a touch on maybe 40 milliseconds on, 40 milliseconds off, and the pattern repeats. So uh, quite a simple pattern, but uh, that's what you'd expect. Okay, so we got three pulses for one LED, and then three pulses for the uh, another LED. And if you build a binary counter, you can sort of realize you sort of count three, then you count four, five, six, and of course you can create then the signals you want. Kind of implies you have like a three-bit counter of worth of logic. You have to drive it by about a 50 hertz signal. Uh, you have to have then a little, sort of a logic gate so the counter resets to the count six. And then some logic for each of the LEDs. Here's our FETs, and then the LEDs, of course, get driven down. Uh, Deglitching flip-flop, and it has to sample then the counter output. So this is the kind of circuit you have. Who knows if it's the exact implementation. But if we go back to the actual drawing, what we can see here, uh, there's a very repeating pattern of uh, flops. I'll just uh, outline one of them, and if you count them, there's about 18 or so flops here. Uh, that implies, of course, the uh, counter probably counts down, down to 50 hertz, and it's scaled a bit. And uh, then if you look at the amount of logic that's left over, 
it sort of tells me that the little simple circuit diagram I had drawn, it's going to be something quite similar to that, whether it be a small state machine or uh, built out of macro functions like this. But uh, that's, of course, how they drove the cost. It's actually a small uh, amount of money. All right, well, that's uh, all that's in contained this assembly, and I guess that sorts down uh, how the designer is able to produce such a, a cheap function. Uh, that chip would be incredibly inexpensive to produce. It's uh, obviously a very large uh, process node and a tiny number of transistors, so I'm sure the yield's quite high. And uh, they can package it up into some cheap phenolic circuit board and attach the batteries and uh, send it to the market. Uh, probably no more than 20 cents of electronics sitting in the entire assembly.